Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy Golden Golden Falls Golden What If, whatever you want to call me. And I'm back. I'm back with part three of What If Deku Had a Foresight Quirk. And quickly, I wanted to say uh, that I have some things planned for the end of January. I'm not going to say anything right now because I want to build the suspense a little bit. But let's just say I'm going to be doing something with Mr. Crown Fiend. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. That's all you get to know, at least for now. Because we're talking about the end of January. And so that's not for a little bit and not for a little while. So you're not going to have to worry too much about that at this moment. But with that said, I'm not going to waste that much more of your time. As always, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to leave a sub. Make sure to leave a comment down below. Leave any suggestions, what, what you want to see. I have some other stuff in the works as well. So let's just get right into what if Deku had a Foresight Quirk Part 3. Let's get it. Azuku Midoriya has made it to the final round. Or at least the final category of rounds. That is the one versus one battles. Now this is something that Azuku has been waiting for. As long as he made it to this stage, he knew that he had a massive advantage over every single person there. And the fact is, that's just the truth. Azuku is made for one versus one battles, is built for one versus one. Of course, he can take on multiple enemies, but it's a lot harder for him, at least with his quirk. So when his first test is someone from the general studies by the name of Shinso, Azuku begins to foresee what he needs to get done and what needs to happen. And frankly, this fight would end relatively quickly. Of course, the Mr. Shinso would hold up some sort of fight, but Azuku knows of his quirk and obviously wouldn't speak to him one bit. He would hear this or that and hear everything that Shinso was saying, but he would ignore him. He wouldn't say a word. He wouldn't say one thing. Of course, just like normal, someone would tell him about, his, about Shinso's quirk. So this Azuku, hands down, would not say a word. He's calm, cool, and collected, at least to a certain extent. And if he knows that he needs to get to Bakugo, he's not going to throw away that chance for some general studies person. Of course, he eliminates him, and he begins to tell Shinso that his quirk is pretty interesting. Very interesting. He's surprised that he couldn't figure something out and get into the hero and into the hero side of things. But you know, some of us don't think that far ahead. Zuku just leaves, doesn't say another word, and he awaits on his next fight. As he does, and as he waits, he sees Shoto Todoroki win. So after this, he knows that Shoto Todoroki is going to be his next challenge. So this is what he does. He heads out, gets ready, and as he's going to the stage, someone approaches him. A fiery aura, a man, a giant man approaches him. This man is Endeavor. Endeavor tells him to get Sh Shoto to use his fire side. And immediately Azuku says that he has no respect for someone like Endeavor. The only respect that he even holds for him is at least a hard-working aspect of it. He can tell and he can foresee in the eyes of Endeavor that he's not a good man, the farthest from it. Of course, Endeavor's mad at hearing this, but Azuku knows this to be true, and an even Endeavor to an extent knows this to be true. Azuku, not really worrying about what Endeavor said, he says that he will get Az he will get Todoroki to use whatever means necessary to win the fight. If that means getting him to use his fire side, then so be it. But Azuku is not doing it for Endeavor, he's doing it for himself. Of course, Azuku would head out and he would approach the stage to see Todoroki on the other side. And immediately as the fight begins, he would ask, well, he would ask Todoroki about his face, about his scar. Did en Endeavor do that to him? And of course, Todoroki says that in technicality, he did. It was all Endeavor's fault, but it doesn't matter right now. He's going to beat him and show everyone that he can only that he can beat everybody using half of his quirk. Of course, Azuku doesn't like this idea. He tells him that there's no way he's beating him with more or with just half his quirk. He's going to have to use his fire side. And let's just say Todoroki is not too fond of this. 
accusing Izuku of basically basically being persuaded by his, by Endeavor. What did he give you? What did he tell you? What is he going to offer you? Azuku doesn't listen and says that he's doing this for himself. He wants a good fight. That's what he needs. He needs to excel himself, make himself stronger, and using half of, of his quirk, or Todoroki using half of his quirk, isn't going to make him better, isn't going to make him stronger. Of course, Todoroki is confused. But nonetheless, their fight begins, and it seems like Azuku has every advantage you could possibly imagine. It's so one, one dynamic, you could say, or there's only one real version of this fight he can see. Todoroki is not ready for Azuku, far from it, actually. The fact that he's only going to use one of his quirks, or half of his quirk, is basically going to allow him to just lose. And he would lose 10 times out of 10. He's too one, one dimensional. He's only going one way and there's no way Azuku would lose to someone this one dimensional. And frankly, it pushes Todoroki to the, bri the bridge. T pushes him so far to the point that he accidentally uses his father's quirk. Accidentally uses his fireside. Azuku smiles and says that that's great. Maybe they can actually fight for real now, but Todoroki still refuses to do so. There is no soppy, nice, motivational speech Azuku will give him. Azuku just doesn't do that. So when he hears that Todoroki doesn't want to use his fireside and that was accidental and he still won't, well, let's just say he's not too happy with that. Azuku feels that this fight is over. He dodges the last iceberg that he gets sent his way and taken and taking a wooden version of his sword that obviously he can use. He can't use an actual steel version because, you know, kill people. But he takes a wooden version of his sword, hitting him, hitting Todoroki so hard in the back of the neck that he gets knocked out cold. Azuku shakes his head and is frustrated. He wanted a good fight, a long fight. He wanted he wanted one that could rival him in Bakugo. That's what he wanted. At least that's the motivation that he currently has at that moment. He felt he felt the need and the want for that. Nobody else has challenged him. And the last thing that did challenge him was a giant monster that was a freak of nature. Something that was horrible. And even Bakugo didn't challenge him enough. Not enough. And hopefully he can challenge him far more now. But still, it's something that he's frustrated with. But he understands, in a way. He understands that all of them, in a way, are freaks. They're all monsters to a degree. So living with that is something that they all need to, well, go to sleep with at night. Todoroki, on the other hand, has been raised by a monster. Izuku would look back as he's named the winner toward Endeavor. He would look at Endeavor and just shake his head. He realizes something. Endeavor is something or is is someone he never wants to become compassion is what 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 is different between both endeavor and all might it's something that makes them truly heroic endeavor is just a flaming ball of trash and that reminds him of katsuki bakugo as well the attitude that bakugo brings well how could he truly be the successor of all might whatever it's something that he doesn't really want to think about, at least not anymore. But just as he that slips from his mind, he waits for the next fights to occur. He easily would destroy anybody else besides Bakugo coming into these fights. So if he had to fight Tenyaida or someone of that degree, it wouldn't even be close. Nothing would be close. Tenyaida, if he had to fight Tokiyami, all of them they're not going to be able to keep up, and none of them can overwhelm him. So, it's finally time. The fight between Katsuki Bakugo and Azuku Midoriya. Now, this is the fight Azuku wanted. He wanted this all along. The successor of All Might stands in front of him, and he knows, he knows that he can show everyone right now that he is the best the fight would begin 
and immediately Bakugo would come out swinging full speed to try and give get, just overwhelm Azuku at all points of attack. Azuku would see exactly what he's doing, but Bakugo's movements they're getting slow or they're getting predictable slowly but surely. Azuku would continue to dodge, move, and eventually he would land a punch straight to Bakugo's stomach that would send him almost off off of the arena. He would he would gather his things and gather his well his body exploding back toward Azuku. Azuku would continue to dodge, using his foresight in a way that Bakugo seems to be completely outclassed. But as Bakugo begins to turn up the heat, and as he begins to use one for all at a small percentage, something he learned via his own quirk and the way he actually controls his own powers, he's able to use about 5% of one for all. As he's doing this though, he begins to actually slowly but surely close the distance on Azuku. It seems that Azuku is being overwhelmed. It seems that he may lose this fight. A punch gets lands to, a, to Azuku's jaw, then his stomach, and Azuku has to regain himself as he slaps Bakugo with his wooden sword. As he does this, he backs up and he begins to kind of shrug off those hits. He realizes that his face hurts and that, well, damage is something he's going to have to be very, very close with. He walks toward Bakugo as he dodges punch after punch, but as a punch lands on Azuku, he counters with three of his own. He knows that these punches are going to hurt, shatter, shatter ribs and break arms, but he doesn't care. He knows that he's going to have to take these punches and he's going to have to give out some of his own. He can foresee it. He sees all of it. He begins to absolutely dismantle Bakugo as he blocks, parries, and takes a couple hits trading with Bakugo in a way but for one punch he gives three he gives four he gives five Azuku begins to speed up his speed and tempo is actually accelerating now Azuku is ha now has the upper hand landing a punch to the jaw of Bakugo to the rib cage of him and then multiple body shots and then a knee to the face Bakugo is shook extremely bad he doesn't know what's happening as Azuku flips him on his back and lands a kick straight to his face once again Azuku continues the pressure and as Bakugo is getting bloodied and battered Azuku realizes that this fight is practically over he immediately pulls out his sword his, well, his wooden sword of course and he lands a straight hit to the temple on the hilt of his sword knocking Bakugo out cold he leans his sword on the ground and he basically holds himself up as if he was using a cane. He's extremely hurt at this point, multiple shattered ribs and probably an injured arm or leg or two. He looks at Bakugo and Bakugo's out. It's over. Midnight announces Azuku as the winner of the UA Sports Festival, but Azuku doesn't even react. He goes down, picks up Bakugo, putting him on his back as he limps his way out of the arena and limps his way to recovery girl of course everyone's shocked this show of sportsmanship isn't something that anybody would have thought from Azuku himself even Aizawa Aizawa believed that Azuku was humbled to a certain extent but not this humbled maybe he just has respect maybe it's so much respect so or so much respect toward Bakugo at least at this moment that he feels the need to show even more to show that he does sort of care he brings him to recovery girl as Azuku begins to leave, Recovery Girl says that that he needs to be healed by her as well. I know that she knows that he has a quirk that maybe or may not allow him to heal, but that could be reducing his lifespan. You never know. They haven't run tests on that part of his quirk at all, so they know nothing about it. Recovery Girl heals Azuku, in turn making him extremely tired. Some time would finally pass, and well, a good amount of it as well and their podiums would be set. Azuku would be at number one, Baku at number two, and frankly, whoever you have in mind, probably like Tokiomi or something at number three. Azuku would look up toward the stands and he would see his mother, nobody else, the only person that's really been there for him this entire time. He sees a ton of the, his quote unquote middle school friends, but that doesn't matter to him at all. As he's waiting there, as he's looking, and as All Might gives out all these medals, telling everyone how good they did, Bakugo seems frustrated. He seems mad. Izuku would pat him on the shoulder and say that they're going to go again. 
They'll be doing this for a long time until they're pro heroes. Bakugo slightly smirks at this, but doesn't say a word. Azuku gets his first place medal and everyone cheers. But there's someone else watching as this is unfolding. Someone else is currently watching this screen, staring at Azuku, wondering what the hell he is. His powers is beyond anything that they've ever seen before. Something that is able to keep up with this with some crazy beings, with crazy hero students, the son of Endeavor. That Bakugo kid that has a crazy explosion quirk that seems to have an, so, some sort of accelerant. What is he? He's just fast? Is he powerful? Can he see the future? Those eyes. Those eyes are what are is what is mocking Shigaraki. But as the screen is on, it gets turned off from behind Shigaraki. Someone's behind him. It's all for one. All for one tells Shigaraki that that boy is the answer, the key. He is what needs to be taken and used as a weapon. He is something that they've been waiting for for a long time. And that this might be their chance to truly get their leg up on the hero society forever and take over. Shigaraki smirks and nods saying that he had questions about this kid, but his name is Izuku Midoriya. They're not sure, or he's not sure what he is exactly, but what he knows is that it's labeled, his quirk is labeled as a foresight quirk, very similar to the one of Sir Nidai, but all for one shakes his head. That is no Sir Nidai quirk. That is something far, far more powerful. Izuku, is then obviously awarded to be the number one of, of UA again. And everything kind of unfolds exactly how he believed it to be. After a couple days would pass, and finally they would arrive back in class, Azuku would hear about what he needs, basically needs to do, and what's going to happen. He has a ton of offers for internships, a ton. But there's one that definitely catches his eye. One that he definitely wants to go to, and that's Endeavor. Endeavor himself may be kind of paying it forward toward Izuku, but maybe he believes that having Izuku there will allow Todoroki, his own son, to become even stronger. But still, that could be the case, or could not be the case. Nonetheless, Izuku will take that chance and will take the training from the number two hero, nonetheless. This would eventually lead into them choosing their hero names. And I think it's pretty fitting that Izuku, with something relatively simple, something that all of you probably could have guessed. So, he'll be known as the all-seeing hero, Heimdall. And of course, for short, Heimdall. We'll still be referencing him as Izuku to reduce confusion, but his hero name will be Heimdall, and everyone knows it from books and storytelling of this North Norse god. And of course, his his quirk isn't exactly the same as Heimdall and his powers, but it's very similar at that. Azuku would then wait on his his ride to approach, and when it did, he would get in. He would be driven all the way to Endeavor and his agency. When they arrive, it's time for his internship. But Endeavor makes it abundantly clear that he's only there to help Todoroki, or to help Shoto Todoroki. And Azuku doesn't care. Any fight with, with Shoto, or any fight with one of the Todorokis, would allow him to get far stronger. He's dealing with a quirk that is very special, and a quirk that would definitely amp himself up further beyond. All quirks would allow him to basically transcend what his for foresight currently is. Prediction and making things happen exactly how he sees fit he can then maybe in the future approach certain scenarios even better with that said though their training would then begin azuku would be put through hell and so would todoroki or shoto todoroki of course they would train day in and day out azuku would see gains that he's never seen before especially against a skilled opponent like shoto it would allow him to foresee 
many different things. Many long-ranged attackers were pretty difficult for Izuku. He's fought a lot of brawlers, brawlers that are very up close and personal, those are easy. The long-ranged attackers that are so, well, unpredictable are exactly the ones that he needed to get better at. And this is perfect time for him too. After some time would pass, they would finally get their chance in the field. But they wouldn't realize that the field would become a deadly, deadly place. Because something decided to occur. A challenge for Izuku, and not only Izuku, but also Shoto Todoroki would appear. And that is the hero killer. When they head back down, or when they head to Hosu City, and when they arrive, everything hits the fan. Nomus, creatures, and everything alike. Because they're searching for something. Searching for someone. But that is not a matter for Izuku and Shoto. Because when they hear that Tenya Ida is gone, and they go looking for him, and they find him in an alleyway with a blade to his back, they fight between Shoto Todoroki, Izuku Midoriya, and the hero killer is about to begin. But that is for the next part of What If Deku Had a Foresight Quirk. And if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a sub, make sure to leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. And I hope all you have enjoyed and have an amazing day. Later.